Guys, 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 I can't believe this. After days and days and days of covering all kinds of trash stories about some fishy leaks, we have something that is actually quite juicy and something I can't wait to delve into. And of course, that's to do with the future of Apple Silicon and their next big transition, which of course is from five nanometers to three nanometers. And on top of all of that, we have information about Apple possibly bringing the M series chips in the Max over to the iPad. So that is all getting me very tingly. And with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe, click that notification. And with that being said, let's just tuck in. So on my quest to find the source of this information, I come across a site called UDN.com. Now, I try to browse the site, but it has a bunch of foreign words I don't understand. So basically, I can only tell you guys to take this information with a grain of salt. I don't remember covering them in the past. So yes, this information could either be very good and very accurate or could just straight up be dodgy. But I am leaning towards it being more accurate because what they're telling us does seem pretty likely to me. So in case you're out of the loop, the A14 chip in the iPhone 12 and the M1 chips in the Max are currently based on a five nanometer process and that was debuted this year. Now, of course, Apple follows a TikTok cycle with the chips, so expect the five nanometer process to stay with the A15 and the M2 chips next year. But of course, Apple's gonna continue annihilating the competition, and in 2022, they could be making the transition to three nanometers. Of course, not often in tech is a number that's smaller better, but in this case, when the nanometer gets smaller, the chip becomes more efficient, and in technical words, it basically means that the smaller size means that the electrons in the chip have to travel less distance and use less power and resistance to do the same work. So yes, Basically, all of that fluff means that's more efficient, it's going to give you more power, and it's going to use less battery life, which of course is a great thing for us consumers. Now, apparently, TSMC is still very much in the early stages of this 3 nanometer process, and in fact, they won't be doing trial production till next year in 2021, and so eventually, this should be ready for mass production in 2022. But, weirdly enough, even before this process is ready to use, Apple's made a contract with TSMC to exclusively use this tech when it's ready. So it's clear that Timothy wants to continue destroying the competition with Apple Silicon. And of course, this advantage they have is going to let them beat competitors like Samsung with TSMC's advanced manufacturing process. Though I'm sure that Apple doesn't really need to worry about Samsung because, of course, Exynos is quite a bit behind Apple's chips already. In fact, they're just straight up terrible. It's also mentioned that people familiar with this project are apparently very impressed at what TSMC has achieved so far. So again, maybe Apple seen that. And so that's why they've possibly already hired TSMC to make chips for them eventually in 2022. Now, of course, you may be wondering what exactly are the chips that are going to be based on this new three nanometer process. And well, thanks to something called common sense, we now know. So if we look to the past, you might notice the A series chip always gets a new process first. And so it's pretty much very likely that the A16 gets it because of course numbers and you know, 2020, A14, jump head two years, A14 plus two, that's A16. Wow, numbers are magical, yes. But anyways, this chip is gonna be the first chip to be based on the new three nanometer process. And pretty much, like I mentioned before, this new process will give many benefits to future iPhone models. For example, efficiency. Apple is the king of efficiency, and of course they're gonna maintain their lead with this new three nanometer process, because of course, the more efficient a chip is, the better battery life you're gonna get, and I'm sure that's something everyone will appreciate. Especially since Timothy thinks it's a good idea to shrink the battery instead of making it bigger year over year. So yes, we 
definitely need these more efficient chips. Anyways, another improvement we can expect with this new nanometer process is of course performance, but to be honest, at this point it's just Apple flexing on the competition because I assure you even an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 10s is fast enough for most people. So of course the improvements in performance is something that we appreciate, but it's not really necessary. And I think phones are pretty much already fast enough for most people. So yes, I'm not really excited for these performance gains, but I guess in some ways it is kind of stupid for me to complain that Apple's giving us too much power. So it is something I appreciate. And of course there will be some additional benefit for the consumer in the form of longevity and possibly more years Years of support which is something that is always appreciated. But enough of the iPhones, let's now delve into the M series and the future of the Macs and possibly the iPad. So in terms of the first Mac with this new 3 nanometer process, I think it might be the 2022 Mac Pro because of course production of this process aligns with the alleged release date of this beast of a Mac. And so I think Apple will introduce this new process with their biggest and baddest Mac yet. But now let's delve into the more controversial rumor about the iPad. So yes, an interesting tidbit about this report is that apparently Apple is thinking of switching the iPad over to its M series of processes that of course they debuted with the Macs earlier this year. And you know what? This makes a lot of sense to me. So before someone tells me in the comments, yes, I am aware the M in the M1 stands for Max, and so for that to be in an iPad wouldn't really make a lot of sense. But at the same time, we have the A series chips in the iPhones, and clearly iPhone begins with an I, so either Apple can't spell or they're just randomly choosing letters and it doesn't really matter. But Anyways, here's why I think this is plausible. So of course the M1 chips we have today in some entry level Max is based on the A14 chip and a lot of people are predicting that the A14X in the next iPad Pros will be based on the M1 chip. And since Apple's been marketing the iPad Pro as this laptop replacement, I think it makes sense for them to include the M series of chips into the iPad Pro. Because, of course, that would neatly tie into Pro Apps on the iPad. So this is something I've been begging for and it's something that a lot of people want on the iPads and I feel like if they made the transition to M chips with the iPad, that would be perfect for the introduction of Pro Apps finally on the iPad. Because of course, from a marketing standpoint, it would make sense. The Macs and the iPad Pro run on the same hardware and so they should both be capable of running pro apps. And so yes, we finally, finally might get Final Cut and Logic Pro and all the pro apps we love and use on the iPad. This of course will be absolutely spectacular because not everyone likes the traditional clamshell style of the entry level Macs. For example, I prefer having a touchscreen and so if Apple can give me Final Cut and Pro apps like that on the iPad, then I'll 100% jump ship to the iPad and throw my Mac in the bin. And yes, I know that some of you might think that, hey, if Apple makes the iPad Pro this powerful, then what's exactly the point in buying an entry-level MacBook? Well, here's the thing. Even if Apple brings Pro apps to the iPad, this won't fix iPad OS's shortcomings. And so for many workflows, Mac OS is still the way to go. And that alone might be worth paying the premium for, for some people. That is pretty much what I want. And so Timothy, again, please give it to me. I beg you, I want this. I've been begging for this for years. So please make it happen. Anyways, enough begging for one video. Tell me in the comments below, do you think Apple should bring Pro Apps to the iPad? And on that note, I'll end it here. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click that notification. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.